All right, I've continued to use the Sewn By Me Beta Panthenol Repair Cleansing Gel. That's more of a milk. <laughs> it's a rather pleasant experience especially for a morning cleanse, which is not even a necessary step. I get questioned, you know, do you need to wash the skincare products off that you put on the night before? You don't. So not everyone needs to wash their face first thing in the morning. Some people prefer to do that. Some people's morning skincare product choices maybe penetrate a little better after they have cleansed the skin. Other people wake up with an oilier face. They want to remove some of that oily residue. But if you have really dry, irritated skin, especially if you are peeling a lot, maybe from starting a retinoid, consider skipping the morning cleanse. Like for me, <clears throat> I started using this Timeless Serum to try out the Timeless Serums a while ago, and I ended up really liking this one, and I've stuck with it. But I think the ingredients penetrate a little better when the skin has just been cleansed. I mean, that's often the case. But like if I weren't using this, I would probably just come in and put sunscreen on my face right away to a bare face. You can do that too if you like. You don't have to, you know, if you have oilier skin, you may not like that. But for me, that's another easy breezy approach. In fact, I think I did that <clears throat> recently when we were traveling together because with travel, your skin has to deal with a lot of different environments when you're traveling, so it can be dry. And I find that a lot of times when I wake up in a hotel, for example, I don't really, necessarily need to wash my face again. My face is, if anything, oval on the dry side. And I just come in with sunscreen. Well, hey guys, I just left Walgreens and I'm heading over to Costco. It is a warm day. I am wearing a dress. I don't know why I prolonged that. That I've had for a couple of months now and I've been really enjoying wearing it this summer because it is light and comfortable. So I, w I filmed a video in that Walgreens that I just left, but I took the lens cover off of the camera, obviously, to film in there. Because this dress has pockets, I just slipped it in my pockets. Well, I get back in the car and I thought, did I set the lens cover down in the store? I couldn't remember putting it in my pocket. I, like that, For some reason that didn't dawn on me, so I went back, retraced my steps in the store, and then I'm standing in the store and I reach in my pocket, I'm like, there it is, where you put it. The Double Tree, notorious for their cookies. And we have a Lifetime Fitness over here. Comment below on if you work out at Lifetime. Is it worth it? I've heard it's pretty expensive. See, I've gotten to a point in my life where I just work out at home. You know, I have that treadmill that, I, I don't know what the magic about that treadmill is because that, I, I didn't never expected it to last as long as it has. So I have that, I have weights, and then there's also a gym in my apartment building that I had stopped using during the, the pandemic because it closed, but it's, it's been open for a while. But since it's been open, because I you know, got the treadmill and everything, I honestly don't use even that that much. But I do really enjoy going to a gym. I thought about joining a gym and Lifetime has always intrigued me because they have a lot of, don't they have a lot of classes? Because I, I'm not gonna just join a gym and do the same type of workouts that I do at home. I, while it's good to get out and you know be around other people, I mean, I'm around other people enough as it is. Uh, but the the thing that would, I think I would, the thing I would really enjoy though is is workout classes. Like I haven't done a, a wor in-person workout class in a long time. Uh, I, I think I would enjoy that, but I've heard lifetime is expensive. The thing that has turned me off from gyms over the years is, is it just me? Have people gotten really inconsiderate when it comes to gym etiquette? It used to be, I swear, 10 years ago, people were a lot more polite in, in gyms. Common courtesy seems to be going out the window. Like I feel as though after, after the pandemic, pandemonium, people are not anywhere near as polite as they were. And they weren't that polite in the first place. I mean, rude people have been in existence since the dawn of time and they're not going anywhere. But people have just gotten not only rude, but just inconsiderate. And yes, they are, they can be synonymous, but some people are inconsiderate in more subtle ways than just being rude, if that makes sense. Do you have any pet peeves that people do in public? For me, I cannot stand it when people talk on their phone, on speakerphone in a public place 
really, really loud. I mean, I just, it's like, wh what are you doing? I mean, we don't need to hear your conversation. Like, why? That is something. See, if you're if you're Gen Z, you don't you don't know what this this is like. But there, once upon a time, people could not talk on the phone outside of a phone booth in public. It's, and I know what you're thinking. Like, well, what difference does it make if they're having a conversation over the phone or if they are having conversation in person? People talk a lot louder when they are on speakerphone than if they're just in person having a conversation. I mean, some people are loud all the time, regardless, but I find that people who are on speakerphone in public, I don't know. They want you to know they're talking to somebody. I don't know. I, I, I do not know. I, I'm, I, I do not enjoy talking on the phone at all. Like, pr prior to the existence of cell phones, I, I was one of those people who would just not answer the phone much because I hate talking on the phone. It's not because I'm shy. I'm definitely not shy. I just don't enjoy talking on the phone. And it's like, why? and I love to talk. I mean, I'm always running my mouth. And I, I just find that it's like, what are we doing here? Um, so I, I enjoy text messaging. Like, I'm not going to answer the phone for you. In fact, I, I feel like I am not in the minority in that regard. And I almost wonder if we will live in a future one day where phones talking on the phone just doesn't exist anymore i do not want to park outside and let my car turn into turn into a oven why am i over here anyway do i really need to go in costco the answer is always yes that guy did a double take like did she have a camera on her dashboard yes sir i do i do i do i do I do, I do, I do. I'm gonna park back here because I can. Costco has the Mrs. Myers Clean Hand Pack, four packs, $17.99. You know, I uh, have been using facial cleanser as a hand wash, but another thing that I recommend doing that's a mild hand wash is to use baby wa baby wash, like. Oftentimes baby washes come as, they're called baby wash and shampoo because they're mild enough to be used as a shampoo and a wash for baby skin. But they're another great option for washing your hands. Ooh, the Olay Botanical Scented Body Washes are here. $16 for the three pack. It's 22 cents an ounce. You get coconut and jasmine, peach and cherry blossom, and prickly pear and plum. I bet those are nice. I wonder if they have the thiazolinones in them. Obviously, you can be allergic to fragrance. Be careful, though. I say this. Yep, they do have thiazolinones in them. I would not use those. Those are preservatives that people commonly develop allergy to. But um, what I was going to say is when you use body wash, make sure you get it out of the skin folds. Otherwise, it can get trapped there and break down the skin and cause irritation. Two pack of Hydro Boost for $30, $29.99 to be precise. That's a pretty good deal, $15 per jar. You guys, check it out. I recently started using this telescopic mascara and you get a two pack plus. Is that the gel eyeliner I've been using? I can't tell. I think it's a slightly different one. Uh, yeah, it's a different one. But uh, yeah, this mascara I really like. Two mascaras plus the plus the eyeliner, $22.99. That's a pretty good, decent deal. This Nutrius body butter cream I tried out a year or so ago. Yeah, a year ago already. Gosh, time flies. It's not too bad. $19.99, it does have fragrance, but it's not as headache inducing as the Boom Boom cream. Yeah, I was just pointing this out in my video in Walgreens, but the Kirkland Signature Minoxidil Foam is a much better value than name brand Rogaine. Uh, you get this uh, six month supply for $50. Hydrocortisone 1% is good for a bug bite, but I don't know that you would need this many tubes of 1% hydrocortisone. It's not good for much else because it can trigger uh, persistent redness, acne like breakouts, perioral dermatitis. I mean, it's pretty weak, but it, it, there is a risk of skin thinning, especially if you use it around the eyes. Don't use it there. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know that you would go through that many tubes. Because the thing about these is like, you don't need a whole lot. You just need a real thin film. I mean, if you have a rash where you're burning through this, it, it, you probably don't want to self-treat with this. Um, and s instead, you want to see uh, your doctor or dermatologist if referral is necessary. 
Ooh, this is handy, especially for back to school if you're going to a dorm. This Alt Light Wellness Series. You have a light. This will charge your phone. Ooh. And then you can store pens and whatnot. $39.99. Frigidaire Ice Maker. $79.99. I wonder how the ice is with this. That looks like it would all stick together. What do you guys think? Speaking of back to school, what do we have here? This looks like it'd be a good thing to give a teacher for their desk. Um, teachers still use dry erase markers. I assume they do. Papermate Ink Joy. Pretty good pen. Not my favorite, but I use them from time to time. I've never used these, the Papermate Flares. They look like they'd be good for doodling. You, they're on sale right now. You get 22, uh, normally $15.99, but they're on sale for $12.99. These are pretty. Bellevue Ceramic Candle 3-pack, $19.99. Not so fond of the sugared citrus and gardenia. Ooh, but that's nice. I guess that's the blue eucalyptus and cypress. Costco is already sneaking out the Christmas wire edge ribbon. I'm telling you, this stuff is really good quality. I bought, purchased this several years ago um, to use to decorate my tree and it has held up really well. I mean, it's very good quality. They have a lot of cute patterns too, like that. It's definitely not too early to buy this. $7.99 is a pretty good deal too. Is that for one roll? Yeah, one roll, I like that. I can look at Christmas any time of the year. I mean, it's July, so whatever. it's appropriate. Ooh, Costco has the sharper image version of Theragun, which I've been loving, my little handheld Theragun. It has been so good for my, um, my, I get these horrible knots like in my upper back, probably from not, not having the best ergonomics when it comes to computer work. I need to get better at that. I mean, I have a chair that I can adjust the height. I have this special stool that doesn't allow me to slouch, otherwise I'll fall off of it. But I still end up, I've just always been uptight, I guess, <laughs> my whole life. Anytime I get a massage, the masseuse is always like, my God, what is going on? It doesn't bother me. Like, I don't notice it's a problem. I don't feel, I don't get headaches or anything of that sort. The only time I notice it's a problem is when I actually go to massage and I'm like, wow, that is really tight. And then I feel like this immense relaxation. Now, a few years ago, I purchased a steamer here. It wasn't this particular model. I love it. Get rid of the wrinkles without having to pull out the ironing board. I use it all the time. Check this out, you guys. Vitamix has come out with a food cycler for like doing your own little mini composting. Claims to have no odor. $339.99. I wonder how long it takes to turn that into soil. They have a Halloween guy out. He's pretty scary. $249.99. They have a little Disney haunted house. I'm not a big Disney fan, but that is adorable. Darkwing Duck was a good show, I will say. Check out this Halloween wreath. That's not a bad price considering all it entails. $39.99. Harvest Pillows. $9.99. That's not too bad. That was nice. I wonder if these can be outside pillows. Or if they're just for indoor. I imagine indoor. Oh, look at these sweet little succulent arrangements. I like this one. That rocking chair looks nice. $129.97 leisure line. That would get covered in algae here. Resin modern shed. Imagine that would get super hot inside too. This thing looks like fun. It even has things for drinks. I wonder how easy it is to get in there without toppling it over. That looks like fun too. Yeah, that mascara I've rather been enjoying. It's lengthening, it doesn't clump. When I was in Walgreens earlier, I was over by the after, in the after sun care section and they make these products that are meant to soothe a burn that you should avoid. They have lidocaine in them, which is an anesthetic. And there's nothing wrong with lidocaine. Man. Uh, the problem with putting that on a sunburn is that there is a great risk of sensitization to the, becoming sensitized to the lidocaine, developing 
contact dermatitis. So it's actually not recommended. Plus, you know, absorption on a burn is so much greater. I think we were talking about this in a recent video. You know, I was talking about the nature of the skin where we're putting things in terms of like, um, oh, I know. I was, I was filming a video for you guys about using retinol during pregnancy and like certain circumstances where uh, prescription retinoids like tretinoin may actually be uh, used, uh, you know, on a case by case basis. And we factor in things like body site, surface area being um, treated because that all, those, those factors influence a, absorption potential so when you have a sunburn that is like it's a, it's a lot more readily accepting of things and the other thing about a sunburn I mean it's basically like uh, uh, your your defenses are down and you lose fluids a lot more readily so you have to stay on top of hydration fluids and electrolytes you can easily become dehydrated if you got a bad sunburn well, hey guys, I'm back from a little Costco run. Of course, I dawdled in there too much. Does anyone else do that? Like, you know, you need to get home, but there's just so much stuff to look at. There's certain products, not products, but over-the-counter medications that I think can get people in more trouble than they end up being worth for the few conditions that they're helpful for. Neosporin, like Neosporin is not doing the general public any favors at all. Like all it's doing is increasing the risk, the rates of contact dermatitis to those antibiotics and it's putting selective pressures for the emergence of antimicrobial resistance. So, if, you know, check out my video recently on Vaseline. I talk about how when compared to Vaseline, there's no difference in wound healing, wound infections, um, but there is a higher rate of contact dermatitis when using an antibiotic ointment um, unnecessary, you know, it, it, unnecessarily. And, and Neosporin is just not a great one. So that's one. And then like, I really find that 1% hydrocortisone cream, the bug bite thing is really helpful. Um, but there are so many situations where people end up self-treating with hydrocortisone cream and it's like the wrong choice and it can actually make the problem worse or it just doesn't do anything. And I, a lot of people end up using hydrocortisone unnecessarily on the face and see the thing with hydrocortisone is like, it'll temporarily make things appear better, feel better, but in, in a handful of conditions, it's ultimately making them significantly worse. Um, fungal infections is one of them. I've talked about this to you guys before, but like ringworm, uh, athlete's foot, jock itch, those are caused by a type of fungus called a dermatophyte. And putting steroid cream, it'll get rid of the symptoms temporarily, but it makes the, the fungus that much more comfortable and proliferate and, and take over and be a problem. So that's a situation because a lot of fungal rashes look like you know, other types of rashes. So that's the situation. And then it can trigger peri or cause perioral dermatitis for people. And it can cause, uh, you know, rosacea. It's called steroid rosacea when used on the face. And temporarily things look better when you're using it, but then it wears off and there's this rebound effect of, of worsening or bringing out a skin problem. So that's another one. And then these these after sun products with lidocaine aren't doing anyone any favors. Whereas I think azelaic acid, the prescription strength azelaic acid should be over the counter. Like, you know, it was great when adapalene became available over the counter because that really opened up a lot of, you know, opportunity for people to have something available and over the counter for acne, like a good acne treatment. But um, azelaic acid, in my opinion, is, is an even better option from a safety and, and helpfulness perspective. And that, no, it's, it's not as effective for acne, for example, as, a, as adapalene is, but it's effective for acne and for other conditions. It has a low risk of serious, it has no serious side effects. It's safe in pregnancy and it can help not only acne, but also rosacea and it can help with hyperpigmentation. You know, it's a treatment for hyperpigmentation. So it's got all these potential benefits provided the individual tolerates it. Um, it doesn't lead to emergence of bacterial resistance. It's safe. I mean, that's just one where it seems like that needs to be over the counter.
So I filmed a video for you guys about, you know, reasons to consider petrolatum for your face, although it doesn't work out for everyone. But when it comes to using moisturizers, whether it be something super occlusive like a Vaseline or up and up version, ointment, or even just your regular ordinary moisturizer, facial cream, lotion, Part of what that's doing, it's not only, not only is it helping to reduce water loss from the skin, keeping it hydrated, it's helping the barrier get on track to functioning better. And it also helps to exfoliate the skin, like rubbing petrolatum over your lips helps to slip between, you know, if you've got chapped lips and you've got that peely stuff, this is going to help exfoliate that without actually disrupting the skin barrier like a mechanical exfoliant would. It's not gonna be irritating like an acid. I mean, I would not put hydroxy acids on, on the lips. It can be so irritating there. Um, but, you know, don't, don't underestimate the benefit of an emollient. And Vaseline is nice, you know, it's a semi, so I say Vaseline because Shout out to, shout out to Cheese, I always want to call him Cheeseboro, but that's, I think it's Chesboro, Chesboro, a semi-solid mixture of hydrocarbons, because man, not only does it reduce water loss like none other, but it has emollient properties to smooth and slip between shedding skin cells, helping to allow for desquamation. Um, so it's really an underrated practice. You know, certain things that you do in a consistent skincare routine are really supporting exfoliation cleansing. Um, just the action of putting water on your face and, and slushing it around with your hands helps. But then the cleanser also helps. Now, of course, you can overdo it with cleansing, of course, and that can, that can end up disrupting your skin barrier. But you have that, and then you have the support of skin cell turnover with, with your moisturizer. And humectants helping with water content. You also have ceramides. I mean, the skin barrier, the, the stratum corneum, the differentiation of the epidermis, it's this ongoing dynamic process. And so moisturizers really help. Now, there are unicorns out there who do not need moisturizer ever. Like, these are the type of people who, they, they splash water on their face and that's it. They don't wear any makeup. Um, hopefully they wear sunscreen, but you know, that's just how they live their lives and they're unicorns. But for the more, majority of us, at some point in our lives, we're going to benefit from using a moisturizer. And definitely, I, of course, highly recommend everyone to use sunscreen. Not only is sunscreen going to help protect against sun damage, but it's a moisturizer, so you're getting that benefit there too. So that that is definitely you know a staple in the skincare routine. <laughs> Why do I do that? <laughs> the little I do that all the time, and I catch myself like I don't even think I'm I don't even realize I'm doing it until I go back and edit. And I'm like, what the heck was that that I did there? And it's like, what, wh why why do I need that door to be open like that? Like, what what's what's wrong with I don't know. It just it's disruptive to to the balance. It needs to be like that. What, what like what is going on in my head? I, I don't know. Um, I, I feel maybe like subconsciously. I think the camera focuses better when the door. I, don't know. I honestly don't know, you guys. I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to these oddities about myself. Um, what was I gonna say? So yeah, cleanse, moisturize, sunscreen. But when it comes, but to I end up using petrolatum on my lips a lot and my eyelids. Let me know in the comments though, where you use petrolatum the most in your skincare routine, if you use it. Or maybe you just, how did that just go out like that? Um, lame, that's so weird. This is plugged in, like what the, maybe it just overheated. It is warm, I don't know. Yeah, this has gotten hot. Why, why would this just go out like that? Did the, I guess the bulb burn out, well shoot. I'm just gonna have to go nighty night. Anyways, y'all, that's my sign. It's time to wrap this vlog up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're having a great weekend. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.